I kind of jokingly named this interview, Help, My Dog Wants to Eat My Vet. But it was, yes, tongue in cheek, but also based in reality. I had yes. a neighbor just a couple of months ago say that she hates to take her dog to the vet because she always feels like her dog's going to eat her vet. He just gets very aggressive. And he's a German shepherd. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, she really needs to watch and control him. She probably needs you on many levels, Stephanie. You could help her <laughs> not only with <laughs> taking her dog to the vet, but also keeping her dog better trained. And with a German shepherd, they're so smart. She could probably do it in no time. But I Yes, well... It depends on the dog and how long yeah. he's he's built those habits, but yes. <laughs> it's just a miserable feeling, getting that dog, putting it in the car, big dog, little dog, anything in between, and you just know they're so upset. They don't want to be going. Maybe this isn't an easy vet visit. Maybe it's really hard on you, too. So tell us anything and everything that we need to know to make things easier. And oh, before you do, I just want to remind everyone that we did another interview with Stephanie a few weeks back about road trips with dogs and things that you need to know. I'm going to link to that both in the notes and also at the end screen because it's a good watch that goes along with this too. So you'll want to make sure that you watch that one as well. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, of course. go. All right, so number one, you need to go slow. You might want to investigate in your area and see if you have a fear-free certified veterinarian locally that you can view or go take your dog to if you like your vet then you're going to want to make sure that they're at least if they are not free fear free certified they are actually uh, practicing fear free practice in their in their uh, vet visits and that just means that they're not pushing the dog past the point of discomfort that means your vet is taking your their time they're not, oh my gosh, we have X, Y, and Z on the schedule to do, and it doesn't matter how the dog is doing, we got to get these things done. They're not going to push the dog through that. They will either take more time on the visit and help your dog feel more comfortable, or they will say, we're going to have to make another appointment for you to come back and get these things done because we've hit, the dog is finished and we need to stop. So whether they're fear-free certified or not, you still want to have a vet who isn't just going to have your dog held down by three or four techs, uh, vet techs and get the job done. And that's not helping your dog feel any more comfortable about the vet. So forcing a procedure when your dog is uncom uncomfortable is actually going to increase their aggression and it's going to increase their fear which means that you're going to start seeing that those behaviors sooner and sooner into the process. And that's where that whole not really liking to ride in the car comes in, because if the only time your dog rides in the car is when they go to the scary vet who forces them to do all these scary things, then the car becomes just as scary. So you want to make sure that you are advocating for your dog. Consider discussing medications with your veterinarian for vet visits, something that may help them be a little bit calmer. Break up your visits. Don't try and get it. I know it's probably convenient to take your vet once, take your dog to the vet once a year, get all the things done. But maybe what your dog needs is for it to be spaced out a little bit more. And so maybe you don't get them all the vaccinations on the same day and they don't get the physical examination all in the same visit. Maybe you break those up for them. You can also ask your vet, hey, can I just bring my dog in and you know, have everybody throw a lot of cookies at them? Maybe put them on the scale to make sure that they're not gaining or losing more weight than they should. And you know, we just have a little fun visit to the vet, lots of treats, some pets if they're up for it. And then we leave. We don't go into the back room. Or if we do go into the back room, it doesn't involve shots or thermometers or anything like that. You can uh, ask them if they will offer those to you where you can just kind of come in. Dog says hello to everybody, maybe gets up on the scale and then gets to go home. That's a really good idea. I've mm -hmm. never thought about that. Yes. If it's a new dog that's, that's just now getting acclimated to going to a veterinarian's office. Oh, yes, absolutely. Having those fun visits are great. It's important that you advocate for your dog. And I know I, I said this, but I'm going to give you an example. Trey didn't used to have any problem with shots or getting his temperature taken. 
Okay. And in the last couple of years, he started to not like that so much. And so whenever he goes in, he gets a, a shot for his back legs once a month. And whenever we go in, I make sure number one, that they are using the tiniest needle possible because he does better with that. We use the puppy needles. <laughs> Okay. And um, also, if it is a subcutaneous, just under the skin injection, it's on his neck, not his back hip. Why? That's interesting. Be because he is less sensitive to the smaller needle and the uh, injection at the back of the neck. Those, those, that's a less painful location. It bothers him less. And so why wouldn't I say remember you remember to put the small needle on right and we're going to do it in the neck and I just it doesn't matter even if it's a vet tech or a vet that knows this I just make sure that they haven't gotten distracted they didn't forget so this way that is as pleasant an experience as possible for my dog and then the other thing that you might want to do is look into muzzle training so that everybody is safe because if anybody's nervous then your dog is going to be more nervous and more stressed but if you just slap a muzzle on them and they have not actually been desensitized to it and gotten comfortable wearing the muzzle outside of these stressful situations, then slapping the muzzle on only adds to the stress. So you want to do the muzzle training ahead of time. If you know you have a dog that tends to be snappy, you don't want to add to the stress by putting something on their face that they're not used to. So doing that training ahead of time can be really helpful. That's a good suggestion. And I've seen that happen so many times. You're taking your dog in. Nail clippings is the first thing that I think of. They always like to battle. And the next thing you know, the vet assistant is bringing out the little muzzle. And that's where cooperative care exercises can be very, very beneficial. By cooperative care, we mean people who know how to help your dog get more comfortable with some of these procedures like blood draws thermometers and kind of giving your dog agency where they're learning that, you know, you can have some kind of a start behavior that says, okay, I'm ready. You can go ahead and do it. And some type of a behavior that says, oh, I'm starting to get uncomfortable. And so cooperative care, things like cutting the nails, grooming is really important. Grooming is, is not something quick and easy. It's a marathon. And so how often does your dog sit there and let you pet them for, you know, two to four hours, depending on how long the groom takes, depending on the breed, correct? Being able to help them participate and cooperate with those procedures, whether it be the vet or the groomer, or even you doing it at home, there are ways that we can build them up to re recognizing that this is not as traumatic event as they thought it was. And they actually can ask for breaks and be listened to. Anybody um, who includes cooperative care in their services could be really helpful. I love working with people to help them, particularly if they have to go to the groomers a lot, like a lot of doodles have to be groomed every four to eight weeks. And other breeds have to have grooms a lot. So you want to really help them get comfortable with that. And you're talking about 10 to 20 years, depending on the dog breed, that you're going to be taking your dog to a groomer or a vet. So you don't necessarily want that to be a horrible experience. I do help with cooperative care. It's not one of my main services, but I, I can, I'm definitely fear free certified and know how to help with those things too. But there are a lot of people out there that can help you. I think that there is a website called fearfreepets.com. Does that yes. sound familiar to you? That's where people should go. They are certified fear free. You can find um, both facilities and uh, trainers, groomers, that kind of thing in your area that are uh, certified through that fear free pets program. You can get a lot of free information. Um, and I would definitely include that in the show notes. I will I'll put that in for sure. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.